Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at another one of the wines I have here from B Bordeaux Consultancy. This is a 2022 wine from La Lande Pomerol. This is La Fleur de Buard. So Chateau La Fleur de Buard, arguably the leading estate these days in the La Lande Pomerol region, owned by somebody called Hubert de Buard. And Hubert de Buard is best known as the, the owner of Chateau Angelus leading Santa Emilion estate, but he and his team from Chateau Angelus also apply a lot of their skill and expertise to Chateau Le Fleur de Buard. This was an estate that Bubert bought in 1998. It had previously been known as La Fleur Saint-Georges, and the team have initially worked in the vineyards there. There was a lot of replanting went on. And in 2011, they completed a state-of-the-art winery there and this really is one of the most modern wineries probably on the right bank of Bordeaux in fact with conical stainless steel tanks suspended from the ceiling to to enable the winemaking to largely be conducted using gravity to move the, the the wine and must around now the estate here is 29 hectares in all i believe they've slightly expanded that i think it was 23 hectares when they bought it there are two distinct plots one is an 18 hectare plot on the plateau at Niac, and the remaining 11 hectares are a continuation of the Pomerol Plateau as it comes over the border there. The soil types at Niac, there's a, a, a clay loam over gravel, and then the remaining vineyards are predominantly quite a deep gravel containing a percentage of clay, somewhere between 10 and 20%. And I think it really was this estate's fantastic terroir that attracted Hubert de Buart to, to purchase it. Now the vineyards are planted predominantly to Merlot. The notes I have say there's 80% of Merlot with 15% of Cabernet Franc and then 5% of Cabernet Sauvignon. However, the blend I have for this vintage has some Petit Verdot in it. So the planting details must have changed to include that Petit Verdot. In 2022, the blend here is 82% of Merlot, with 10% of Cabernet Franc, 5% of Cabernet Sauvignon, and 3% of that Petit Verdot in there. The 2022 vintage was generally warm and dry, but with some rain to relieve water stress for the plant in the early summer. In general, the style of the vintage is one where there's plentiful ripeness, abundant tannins, and a lovely smooth roundness to the texture of the wines. Picking here started on the 7th of September and lasted two weeks through until the 21st. The fruit here is distemmed, crushed and undergoes a five day cold soak. So the idea of that is that the fruit skins are soaking in the juice and that will enable perfume and colour to be extracted from those without the presence of alcohol that you will see once fermentation has started. And so it's a gentler extraction in an aqueous solution. Fermentation went on in those conical suspended stainless steel tanks that I mentioned earlier. Those are temperature controlled. And for 2022, because of the abundance of tannins, I should imagine the regime of pump overs and rack and returns was probably fairly limited because it wasn't difficult to extract tannins in 2022. In fact, it was more difficult to make sure that you were producing a balanced wine that wasn't over extracted. The maceration in the, of the skins in the wine continued for three to five weeks depending from lot to lot of wine. Again, with the intention of creating plusher, smoother tannins. The wine then aged in oak. There's quite a generous oak regime goes on here at La Fleur de Buard. The barrels used would have been 225 litre French oak barrels, and 50% of those were new, and the remaining 50% had, had been used for one fill previously. The different lots aged for between 18 months and 15 months in oak. The wine was bottled without fining or filtration, but at the same time, if it's spent 15 months in barrel, that will allow it to fall bright and the sediment will be left in the barrel as, it, as the wine is bottled. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? I'd say it's a deep, dark ruby red, but actually it's not quite as dense as I'd thought. I can see through it. There's quite a vibrant sort of purple notes to this sort of black red black ruby color there swelling it 
The wine is labelled as having 14.5% alcohol and unsurprisingly it's forming some fairly generous tears on the side of the glass there. So let's have a look at the aroma, shall we? My first impression of those aromas is a generous, lifted, perfumed red plum fruit. There's a freshness to the red fruit. But then going on from that, there really is quite a savoury note. There's almost a note of high ripeness coming through to sort of lifted notes of prune, but then there's a distinct sort of savoury meaty note in there at the same time. There are some notes of cedar. They're incredibly well in integrated. There's a sort of a, maybe a slightly dusty note. There are some spices coming through. Just hints of nutmeg, cinnamon, those sort of sweet spices. There's a richness and a warmth to the aroma. There's a generosity there. They're quite intense. So let's see what we make of it on the palate, shall we? Tasting the wine, after the richness of the aromas, my first impression is that there's a really lovely freshness to it. The wine starts off as being really quite elegant and medium bodied. Then the structure starts to kick in and taking over from the initial red fruit perfume, you've got quite a sort of a cedary, slightly meaty, really quite savoury mid palate. The tannins are very fine. There's a, a, an almost cocoa powder texture. They're finer than what I would describe as being grainy. They're right across the mid palate. And while there are sort of hints of vanilla, it's much more sort of a drying, toasty, cedary, maybe slightly nutmeg sort of note. The freshness is good. There is still some liveliness and perhaps there's a little bit of black fruit Perhaps showing more as a sort of a savoury black olive note that's showing on the sides of my tongue. The flavours are lasting really quite well, but actually I think it's the tannins carrying them. The finish is quite structured. The alcohol sits behind the fruit and the tannins. It is giving some expansiveness, but it's, it's really rather framed by that tannic structure. While the wine has a smoothness and an opulence, I suggest it probably needs two or three years to allow the, the fruit to open out and come past those tannins. They're not astringently drying, they're not particularly bitter actually, but they certainly have a presence across the mid palate there. And although the flavours endure, it's a solid structured note that's, that's lasting, not the delicate perfumes that you saw on the nose or initially on the palate. The Wine Searcher Aggregated Critics Score for this wine is coming in at 91 out of 100, which is pretty much in line with the scores that La Fleur de Buard has had for its good vintages over the last couple of years. I think it's a wine that, given a little bit of time, will open out. I think its, it's nature will always have black fruit and earthiness, but there are some red fruit perfumes apparent on the nose that I'd like to think would come out as the wine ages. I'm certain this is a wine you could keep for 10 years, almost certainly longer, 15, 20. Given its smooth and supple texture, it probably doesn't need long aging, but its alcohol, its freshness, and its concentrated fruit would allow that if you wanted to. I'll pop a link in the notes below so that you can follow that to the Wine Searcher website. You can see what the price of this is and the availability in your market. And I think you'll see that this is actually a relatively good value for money wine. I'm not suggesting it's a cheap, example of La Longue de Pomerol, I would suggest that if you see it in the context of its score, that that's where you'll see it offering value for money. I think this is a seriously made modern wine showing plenty of quality that should open up beautifully. So thank you so much for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you found it interesting, do please press the like button. We'd really appreciate that. If you have any comments, please pop those in the comments box below. We'd love to know what you think about the tastings we're doing, the wines we're looking at, or anything else that relates to that. If you have any friends you think might like to watch the video, please feel free to forward it to them. We'd really appreciate your endorsement in, in doing that. I have a few more of these wines to taste from 
Bordeaux from the 2022 vintage. So I hope you'll join me over the next week or so to look at those. So thank you again for joining us and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye for now.